In this video, I want to give an example of how corporate buybacks can fail miserably and also how their ill-timed buying decisions relate to using a method like stage analysis to properly time your entries and exits in the market. So back in early 2008, I had this vivid example that I remember that was on CNBC where the CEO of Potash Corporation was on Fast Money, I believe, and he was all excited about his stock. I mean, these fertilizer stocks had been going up for a couple of years, and the gains were humongous on these stocks. And, you know, of course, CNBC was all bulled up um, after they, you know, had witnessed what was going on with these stocks. And they had the CEO on, and he made a claim that he actually was initiating a buyback program on their stock um, after it had gone up like 400 or so percent. So in this example, like if you actually go on Google and type in CNBC Potash CEO 2007, you can see an article where I, with, they're talking about the video that I'm talking about. And uh, in this article, they say, you know, they have the CEO on and they said, you know, they're, they're talking about how their margins are expanding and how they're making a ton of money because the whole agricultural sector is booming. And they're saying, what are you doing with all this money? Um, well, they're spending money to bring back idle potash supplies. And we announced a share buyback. I mean, this falls right into place with what we've seen recently all over the stock market with these lunatic buybacks. But And the, and the CNBC reporter says, you're buying back 5% of your shares. Isn't that right? And the, and the CEO says, amid this craziness we had in the middle of January when people said they wanted out of agricultural stocks, we bought back shares. We buy back opportunistically, though. So he's saying that we bought back shares, but we tried to buy on the January 2008 pullback. Um, so let's go look at the stock and basically, like, what happened. So, you know, for background, um, as I said, these fertilizer stocks beginning in. 04, 05, they started breaking out of a stage one base. And then after about doubling, they consolidated again. And really in late 2006, these stocks started to go crazy to the upside. Um, you can see here a nice stage two breakout around $10. And that eventually went all the way up to $65 before it topped. But the CEO is talking about early 2008 is where he talked about that buyback program here where the stock was sold from like over 40 down to just below 30 so roughly like a 25 percent pullback and he's talking about somewhere in here they started buying back shares and who knows if they bought back further on but the first thing that should kind of throw off some alarm to you is that he bought back shares after the stock had gone up 400 percent i mean that's alone is kind of crazy i mean um, you know, over 400% in a year and a couple months is a huge gain. And anyone that's just entering the market here is, you know, playing with fire. Um, I mean, it's, you know, they have to understand that the stage two is getting more mature and they could definitely make more, you know, gains, but you have to realize the further you buy into a stage two advance, the more, you know, opportunity that you're buying closer to the top. The ideal entry point is always at the breakout of the stage one base. So not being a, you know, he's probably not a sophisticated trader though. And obviously they're making a lot of money and they're, you know, getting greedy. So they initiated a buyback and look what happened. I mean, after when the financial crisis started, uh, Potash, you know, basically went into a parabolic top and then crashed. Um, you know, and I'll show you the future stock price action further along in this video, but actually I'll go to that right now. So essentially what happened to Potash after the crash is it's really just gone sideways to nowhere ever since. So I drew this box, like this is an example of, um, say they bought back shares somewhere in this range, like giving them the benefit of the doubt between 30 or 40, it could have been higher. I mean, even if this is the case, you know, it's not even a good, buy at all because the stock is only traded above that buy region 
you know, just briefly in 2008 where it went parabolic and crashed and then briefly in 2011. So this buyback program was not a success at all. They definitely could have used the money to invest in the business and not, you know, blow it on buying back overvalued shares. But this is exactly what a large majority of the stock market has, has done in the last couple of years is blow tons of money buying back shares on expensive stocks um, that are late in advances because money is so cheap right now. So, you know, like I said, from a stage analysis perspective, the ideal time to buy is the breakout of the base after bear market or close to it um, where things have bottomed out finally and the stock starts to show a new bull market advance um, and not like way up um, after a 400% a gain and further into a stage to advance. If you're a smart trader, you know that this is a more dangerous time to buy and really a corporation has no business buying back shares here um, because they're, you know, blowing money that they could use to reinvest in the business. You know, the same thing happened to, you know, these agricultural stocks were monster winners. I mean, Agrium went from the 20s all the way to 100, like a five bagger. Um, and Mosaic went, you know, from 20 to 140, so like a seven bagger in a period of a couple of years. I mean, you know, these were, these, this is like textbook stage analysis, trading, breaking out of a base on big volume increase. Uh, outperforming the stock market and you know going into a super stage to advance so you can go back here and see exactly how this pattern plays out uh, but the point is is that these corporations are not market timers they're just people that are using um, you know excess funds from a booming stock market to blow them, plow them back into the uh, the market at a bad time and here's an example of a company that's been blowing tons of money on buybacks is Nike. Um, they uh, just approved another buyback program in mid-November, which was twelve billion dollars. So, like, the market capitalization of the stock is a hundred billion. So they're going to buy back uh, one tenth of the stock, and they've already actually bought back eight billion. So that they've they've bought one fifth of the value of this company over the last. Uh, or, you know, that's what they're going to buy back for the future. So, um, and look at where Nike has gone. I mean, here's kind of funny, but when the buyback was announced, uh, the stock recently, you know, kind of spiked to a top and then it's crashed with the rest of the market ever since this year. But look at, I mean, Nike's authorizing a, that big of a buyback after this monster stage to advance. I mean, this looks just like potash, basically. Like, Nike's gone up six and a half times since. 2009 from 10 to 65 and they're buying back shares up here after an incredible stage two advance that looks you know almost parabolic up to this point so don't be surprised at all if this buyback decision proves to be uh, very poorly timed as well um, I mean they're doing it over four years but they'd be much better off doing a buyback um, you know, after a bear market when the stock has gotten beaten to a pulp versus way late in the bull market, which is what they're trying to do now.